everybody to the Giddy Gang Show here on Cigar Box Nation TV. I'm Ben Giddy. We got special guest David Conquois here with us today. Glenn and Farley, of course, we got a great show lined up for you. As you can see, we got a little bit different venue here today. We're out here on the Mill Stage at Giddy HQ. Uh, we're going to be going. HQ. HQ. That's headquarters. Headquarters, everybody. Okay. Corporate abbreviation, folks. So we're going to be giving away another. Last week's winner, David is going to be talking about his history as a music educator. Uh, we're going to be doing the mystery unboxing, and of course, a little bit of picking and grinning. So let's get into it now. But it's the Giddy Gang Show on Scarbox Nation TV. We just want to say, as always, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for making the drive up from beautiful Massachusetts. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> All right. So uh, one of the reasons that we're here shuffling about at random is that Nick is still out on his honeymoon vacation, uh, traveling about the great state of New Hampshire, I believe, currently up at the New Hampshire Highland Games, up in the great frozen north of the state, celebrating all things Scottish, Scottish culture, eat, drink, music, all of the good things that make one Scottish. You know, I'm part Scottish. Are you? Yeah. My dad's family name is Crawford. I thought your middle name was Scott. <laughs> well, that's a whole nother, whole nother story there. All right, so as, we, as I said in the lead up there, we're going to be announcing the winner of last week's giveaway. Actually, if you caught it yesterday, Glenn and I went live briefly from in on the Juke Shack stage to show off that little prototype guitar, which is a prototype of our new line of illustrated guitars that I had built, oh, a couple of months ago, I think it was. Uh, that is currently on its way to jolly old England, heading to the UK. A town called Wrighton, up near Newcastle mm. upon Tyne. Mm. We're all wrong. <laughs> in the northeastern corner, not too far from the Scottish border. So, congratulations to Alex Russell, whose name was chosen randomly from among the millions, millions. of people who shared last week's show publicly mm -hmm. on Facebook. Now, joking aside, last week's show, if you watched, more raw in format. We were out in the shop using a phone, the signal was dropping, all sorts of heck was breaking loose. Um, but 22,000 views, over 320 shares, hundreds of comments, so thank you all for spending your time watching us uh, yeah. engage in extended shenanigans, really. Yes. <laughs> We'd also like to send a shout out, David, uh, if all is going well, some yeah. of your students are yes. actually out there watching the show today. Yes, Birch's Academy. Yay! Awesome. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to try to keep it clean yeah. and, <laughs> and informative yeah. Yeah. for our younger viewers, family friendly. That makes my head of school feel much better. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this week we're going to be having another giveaway, and I'm pretty excited about this, not just because I came up with the idea about two hours ago. <laughs> what are we giving away this week? But You'll understand. We're going to get into that later. But as always, to be entered in our giveaway drawing, uh, you've got to share this video, share this post publicly on your Facebook timeline and or on a group or a page. The reason we stress the publicly is that if you don't share it publicly, that's choosing the little public option when you click the share button, we can't see that you've shared it and you won't be entered. So thank you all for watching and sharing. <clears throat> Where are we at? 
Glenn? Moving along. All right, we're moving right along. So I want to thank uh, David. I want to thank you for coming up to visit with us. It's not your first visit here to CB Giddy. Actually, uh, one of the first concerts we did from this stage was TJ Wheeler. Right. The jam session at the end, you jumped up on the stage and played that very bass over there. Yeah, you and, did. That, uh, and my finger skin is just starting to go back. <laughs> well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that bass uh, later in the show, because after last week's show, when I played it, and you can see that this week we chose to bring in a ringer who could actually play it, um, a lot of you asked, like, what's the story behind this bass? How did you build it? Are there plans? Unfortunately, there are no plans, because I had no plan when I built it. I, I ain't going to lie. It, it, it went in fits and starts, and there are some things that would be done differently, namely the braided stainless steel cable strings that Good tear call. one's fingers right up. But uh, Idiot. See, that that was me right there. <laughs> yeah. Well, the blood stains on yeah. the reclaimed wood really bring out the character, yeah. I think, and yeah, add to true. the tone. Yes, it's true. Yes. No joke. So, David, you have been... A music edge. I mean, you've been a musician for yeah. many years. Yeah. The better part of half a century. I yeah. Believe. My first gig when I was 16. I'm 100 years old now. So. Yeah. So. It's been a long time. Been a while. You've been yeah. playing with the same group of guys for yeah. 40 years. You yeah. said. Which yeah. Is wow. Quite a. Uh, yeah. Quite a run. We actually still like each other, which is amazing. <laughs> wow. You know, in that said, yeah. Um, but the educational side. You started giving guitar lessons. Yes. Uh, guitar instruction on conventional six-string guitars. You play the bass in addition to everything else that you pick up, I imagine. A matter um, of necessity, if you want a gig, you got to learn how to play the instrument. You know, that's, that's it. How it is. You've written books, guitar instructional books. Um, so, but specifically, we're focused now on the work yeah. you're doing, not just teaching kids to factory make guitars, but the idea that they can build their own right. instruments and then make music on those. What have you seen? I, you're on the front lines doing this. We're we're working on on building the program and getting the word out. You're on the front lines. What, what are you seeing out there? What is the potential of this idea? The first thing I see is joy. I see joy in accomplishing something that they've made. You know, everybody likes making something, and everybody likes to say, "Hey, look what I did." You know, and it's and it's a really cool thing. And then the other side of it is not only look what I did, but then look what I can play with what I did. So, you know, when I first started working in, in the grammar school uh, world, we were teaching kids how to play the ukulele. It was third grade kids. And it was working out really well. And they, they took to it. And it wasn't until last year that we had them build their own. Um, they were breaking and things like that. They weren't that very sturdy. The students took their ukuleles, they painted them, they made them their own for them, just little things like that, like more kind of more, oh, that's my ukulele, you know, I'm not going to leave it on the floor kind of thing. Then they learned how to play. You had third grade kids that really could only, you know, conceptualize playing one or two chords at a time, maybe even just one chord at a time, but getting them together in a group and saying, okay, you guys play a C chord, you guys play an F chord, you guys play a G chord, and then they're making music. Wow, that's and, cool. Yeah, and that's the, the success. That yeah. was the takeaway. So you look at it and say, okay, you can go through all of the technical, formal stuff. I'm sure plenty of people out there in, in the nation have had the lessons and have had all that stuff, and you've hated your piano teacher, you hated your guitar <laughs> teacher, right? So um, I thought, let's make it easy. And you know, using tablature or you know, with the, the, um, the diatonically tuned canjos, you mm. can't make a mistake. You really can't make a mistake. You can always find the notes. So there's more success in that. Well, the difference. Being a guitar instructor, a, a, you know, a music instructor, the difference you've seen between handing a kid an instrument, here, here's a ukulele, here's a guitar, why don't you play it? You can do, you know, telling them that, giving it to them, versus when they build it themselves and connect with it. I mean, you've seen that yeah. difference firsthand. Yeah. yeah, the ownership is, is, is incredible. It is. It's, it's pride. It's pride and it's ownership. I made this. Was it was a TV show later on? You know, whatever the ending was, I made this, and that's yeah. true. Yeah. I made this. Yeah. You know, Ben Farley, they made this. Mm -hmm. This is cool. You know, Farley, <laughs> Ben made this. Well, yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I almost blew that one. Um, you know. Well, Glenn, recently at the Maker Fairs over here in Dover, a nearby town, uh, watching the kids make their own canjo, and then not just you know hand it to dad and run off to a, a more exciting booth, but 
wandering around the fair for the rest yeah. of the day, clinking on their canjos, you know, having fun with it. And we didn't even, at that uh, booth, we didn't even get into the decoration. No. Uh, right. It's true. Yeah. You know, for a lot of kids, especially the younger ones, the idea that they can decorate their instrument that they built however they want, paint, right. markers, whatever. Uh, we had a little photo shoot here a couple of weeks ago and with younger kids, seven, eight years old, and handed them a, a cardboard box guitar that Farley had done just as a, to see if it would work. And like, here's some markers, do whatever you want. And they're just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. you know, that, was, that, that, was a, that yeah. became the whole thing. Like, that was a big question when we were doing the ukulele program. One of the questions the kids had was, can I paint this? Yeah. Can I mark it up? Now the traditional answer would be, oh no, we can't do Ooh, that. Right. But I said, go ahead. Yeah. Because what is it? You know what I mean? It's it's theirs. So, you know, they wrote names, little things on it, but yes, it was the next thing. It's just that accomplishment, you know? Yeah. And and there's a, a philosophy that I've been sort of throwing around that, that I really believe this, is that at least now, today, you know, people are involved in music in a sort of, you know, a non-active way. You know, we want to make them be more active in music and playing music. You, you can be a passive person, listen to music and, and enjoy music all you want to, but to be actively involved in making music I think is a real key um, to really getting you know kids and the, this next generation of people, even adults, getting them moving forward playing yeah. instruments. Yeah. That you don't have to sit there and wait for somebody to give music no. to you, that you can make your yeah. own. You know, that was a big awakening for me when I discovered cigar box guitars. You know, I've been into guitar for a long time. The idea, wait, no, wait I can make my own? Yeah. I don't have to go to the store and buy one yeah. that was made by a luthier up in a white tower somewhere, you know, like, right. yeah, it really brings, just on multiple levels, brings it back to the roots that anybody can do it, anybody can build it, play it. And We're going to have a little jam here, oh, I right. think. Uh, I love the segue. But then, <laughs> but then, boom, segue. <laughs> well, yes, the, uh, we'll be using the... So, promote plug, the official David Comtois oh. custom signature um, bottleneck slide. Yeah. I call it the WB series. It's the wine bottle series. Um, purchase consumed and then repurposed by myself. I give it all to folks. Hundred percent. That's it. Yes, they're they're so rare that you can barely find them. Now you uh, said you used the method uh, that I know a lot of people in the nation have used with the wine bottleneck, yeah. scoring it, ice water, yeah. heat. I've never tried it myself. I know I'd be bleeding within within <laughs> minutes. But hats off yeah. to all of you yeah. who do. Right. Yeah, you know it's yeah it's it's a crapshoot, but you know what? It's really cool. You know when paint it up, give it to a friend for a gift. Hey. Christmas is That's coming. Right. I, just want to, I want to take a moment to say hi sure. to Bob Rawson. Thank you for tuning in, Bob, and thank you for your words of kindness. Completely appreciate that, Peter Gowan. Jenny, totally agree with you. It is a great idea to have kids make their own instruments, as we know. Yeah, but Investing you, yourself into something, is, it generally makes you enjoy it a little bit more. Now, uh, now when you see Glenn kind of looking off to the side here, he's got a laptop over here, looking at or reading your comments so that we can interact with you. So yeah. I just wanted to say that he's not, not just, just like <laughs> smoking a butt in the corner over there. But there, and there's a lot of people that have already passed by that I'm sorry that I just can't catch back to your comments, but I just want to also say hi to Jim Burt. It's always good to Jim see Burt. you, Jim. Kenny Robeson, Robinson, excuse me, Paul Lewis, who has had, who has had uh, said hi to Ben and Farley both specifically. Yeah, John, man. John up in Ithaca, good to see you, John. He's doing amazing work on One Finger Lessons nice. in the How to Play Cigar Box Guitar Group. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Nice. Yeah, man. Let's do this stuff. All right. Well, we're going to do a little blues jam here. Now, David's playing one of our illustrated... Oh, wait. I was going to jump up on this. Oh, that's right. I'm not playing this jump mandolin up. thing. Ooh, jump up. Jump up. This is jump, the... Jump. The exit stage right segue of the show. I gotta tell you, I just, I've always wanted to be on the David Letterman show. This is better. This is like, you know, this is better than the Letterman show, folks. This is awesome. All right. So this is just a, a blues jam, 12 bar blues in open G. We're all tuned to open G. If you're holding your guitar at home, jump in and play along. Yeah. That's what you do.
it down, Ben. Well, I hit three quarters That's okay. of all of the notes. <laughs> well, there are 12 notes, five of them, eight of them you're supposed to hit, five of them, oh well. Optional. That's right, they're optional. optional. I was just trying to keep the <laughs> going. That's all right. Well, you know, the reason, uh, you got to push yourself sometimes, and, and part of that is not worrying about doing it right. Right. You know, uh, I have a saying, if you're having fun, you're doing it right, and that, that goes a long way, but we've had people ask in the past, you know, some people watch these very closely, and I'm like, the cousin seemed that Farley's hitting quite all of the chords. I'm like, well, <laughs> she's still learning a lot of these songs she doesn't know, but she's up here doing it every week yeah. as part of a little lesson of you can do it. We, we do our best to do it, some of us more professionally than others, but you know what? You can play these things, you right. can make your own music, and don't worry too much about it if you're doing it exactly right. Right, you're gonna, and you're gonna learn. I mean, when I was a kid growing up, we sat around in a living room like this, just doing that. One guy knew a couple more chords than we all did, and we're all like, how do you play that, how do you do that? And we did nice. it, and we messed up, and we did it, and yeah, and that was it, and then a band was born. Well, I was telling Glenn earlier, you know, one of the best ways to expand with others yeah. make the mistakes you know it doesn't matter but getting out there and playing with others it, it forces you out of your your whole you know it forces you to, to be more cognizant of rhythm and and all of that so yeah good stuff Indeed. nice I want to just briefly say this week's giveaway still very excited about it yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna do a little teaser here What? Ooh. It's going to be an illustrated guitar. <laughs> yeah, that, that's when we needed the, the Seinfeld bass. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm slow, man, okay. <laughs> First time I've been on TV, you know. So it's going to be one of our illustrated guitars, and the interesting part is going to be the illustration. So we'll get to more of that soon. But first, yeah. another mystery, another bit of excitement. Uh, recently, a box arrived here at Giddy. Um, and again, we're not soliciting gifts, um, but it, I didn't pay attention to the label. I'm like, oh, it, it, you know, I, okay, I put it in my office, like, we'll get to that. Just a couple of days ago, I noticed, hey, this says attention Glenn Blood on it. This wasn't for me, this is for Glenn. So we are gonna open this now. We're gonna clear, a, well, we, he's gonna open this now. We're gonna clear a space here on the Giddy Coffee table, have some coffee talk. I want to say, and this. Oh, go ahead. I just do want to say, Louis. Yes, we do know how lucky we are to do what we do for a living. <laughs> I mean, Absolutely. It's this is, in, in mind you, this is this is Friday, you know, and this is our way of having a good time and hopefully engaging you to inform, to inspire, to, to entertain you. Yeah. And you know, we are entertaining ourselves as well. And but <laughs> somebody pinch me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not lost on us how how fortunate we are to be able to, to be able to connect with you at, at in this way on this level. And it's 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 really a blessing to be able to it do is. that with people just the world over. And obrigado to the people in Brazil. I know you're watching right now. I'm sorry. I think it was Mateus I saw earlier. I want to say hello to you. Uh, well, that's why we thank you so often right. because thank you for being a part of this with us because. Just us sitting up on the stage, you know, it'd be a lot less fun. <laughs> Although we were having fun uh, pretty good. getting ready. But well, anyway, <laughs> let's see what's in here. So this was sent up to us by Gary DeRosiers, who is uh, down there in Massachusetts. He has sent a number of surprise things up here to the Giddy, uh, the Giddy headquarters. He he sent you an awesome tin oh, yeah. uh, thing with a built-in speaker yeah. there. Yeah. Sent a guitar up for my son, Kieran. I'm next. <laughs> We're not soliciting <laughs> gifts. Oh, no, not at all. I'm next to perhaps present it to the gang. So this, we had not pre-opened this box. So we're really trusting that Gary <laughs> is not going to send something. <laughs> a clown jumping out of a box. <laughs> that he's not going to send something clown. inappropriate. So. Yeah, and, and I don't want to get too deep uh, on air with with Gary, what Gary's saying, but thank you very much, Gary. That just the fact that even your personal note means a lot, and I know that he's done that with every single he one does. of these. And, and you got to understand, I don't want to be too touchy feely, but like that's it's just something that we're allowed to have in this community. And I know it's an online thing, but the, the the few times that we get to reach out and touch one another emotionally through text, through video, through audio, it really means a lot. And so this is really cool. So thank you. All right, well, let's see what's in there. Hey, oh! Hey, yours came with a case. Wow. <laughs> Wait, funnies, the funnies. I want to read the funnies. Ooh, yeah. No. That's a <coughs> deep, <coughs> deep reading there. That's not kidding around. Yeah, buddy. 
So if it's a three stringer, maybe we'll be able to put it into use. Um, so, you know, it's what Glenn was saying. John, how you doing? Henry, good to see you. Henry Lynn. Henry Lynn, in the house. Oh. 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 Looky there. Dude, wow. Gary has outdone himself this week. Oh my God. Solid body. Nice. Three wow. string. Looks like maybe yeah. cedar. Is that aromatic yeah. red cedar? Wow. Neck through the body. It looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, buddy. I'm, oh, man. Right, I gotta Look at that. Dual yeah. humbuckers. Get up close. Yeah, there. Yeah. I'm going to go slow so the camera can check this out. But... Make sure it's zoomed in on you. So, I mean, I'm, without diving into it, this is amazing, Gary. Without diving in too deep right now, but we got, you know, the, t the two pickups. So, volume and tone for each pickup. So, again, volume and tone for each pickup. And uh, it's a three uh, hardtail three string uh, bridge. Uh, the, the, I'm sorry, I get my hand in the way. The selector switch to select between the pickups or both in, in the middle position. This is just gorgeous, Gary. Wow. Very nice. I like the good design. And beautiful. as some of you have probably noticed, it is not a cigar box guitar. It is a homemade, handmade, solid wow. body. Straight the fact, the reality that you know we're not limited. You don't have to use a cigar box. You don't have to use anything that anybody tells you. You get to pick what you're going to make your guitar out of. Be it a, yeah, an old uh, camera box, silverware box, a gas can, a, a, a plank of wood from your grandpa's barn. You know, you get to decide, and that's one of the really awesome things about the building side of this. You know, we've been talking a lot about playing today. But there are some people who build just because they love building, and then they give them away and, and never really play one. There are some people who only play them and don't build. It's, it's wide open. You can be in this for whatever reason makes you happy. If you're having fun, by God, you're doing it right. I mean, Leo, Leo Fender, one of the great guitar manufacturers, Leo Fender did not play the guitar. He was a country music fan. He could not play the guitar. He just built it based upon his friend's advice and things of that nature. Yeah. So, again, that's the... That's the takeaway here. Wow. Glenn's getting this thing tuned yeah. up. We might have to plug it into that amp a little bit. Oh, that's right. That's okay. I, I want to show Gary the, the proper respect for this, but this thing is amazing. Well, Gary. Pop, pop over here yeah. and plug it in. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to scoot off for just a moment. Wow, well, this is amazing, in. right? Yeah, it's awesome. Thank you very much, David. Well, sir. It's been a pleasure having David here. I don't know if oh. you folks know. Oh, this is awesome. Thank you. Sure. I'm also a roadie. <laughs> <laughs> it works. <laughs> Oh, oh man, yeah. this is serious. Yeah. I'm going to hold on to my bedpost here. Well, yeah, do a little, <laughs> yeah. maybe the two of you oh, do a little thing there. Fits oh. right onto the upper thigh. Are we going to jam session going? What, what, what you got there? What are we playing? I don't know. You're the leader. We're doing that. Uh, so, if it, are we doing the Connie's on that? Yeah. Okay. Are we do it on so, that? Oh, big dad. So I, uh, if you haven't, I'm sorry, we're, we're lagging here a little bit. If you haven't been on the CB Giddy Craft Supply Facebook page recently, it it's a wine bottle. Um, <laughs> the past couple of weeks, we, we, were posting we were posting lessons on how to play a particular song that oh, we yeah. are working on an arrangement here to, to play on. working on, <laughs> and which Farley is doing very well with. And uh, but in each lesson addressed one chord per lesson, very short lessons, two minutes a piece at tops. And so I think what we're going to do now, or at least we're going to try, unless unless we switch tracks, is is no, let's do it. Okay, yeah. is doing that tune where it's just five chords, but they're not the normal like the one finger lessons that we've been through in the past. These ones are adding in just a couple of notes uh, or a couple of different positions for fingers that usually have like they make the uh, they're not just power chords. Let's put it that way, and they give the, they make a, give the, the the chord a slightly bigger voicing. Now this song is not like a blues song. I don't want to explain it too much, but it's a bit more of a uh, has a bit more of a gypsy feel to it. I don't want to bite off more than I or t give it too much credit, but it has more of a gypsy feel in that it's in a minor key, then it has like this nice leading tone, which probably doesn't mean a whole lot, but I mean it's it's just got a nice funk feel to uh, a nice catchy feel to it. Yeah. Uh, so we'll yeah. give, give it a shot. All right. One, One two, three, four. Thank you. 
play a bass, yeah. it sounds yeah, even but better with Ben playing like almost like a mandolin type yeah, instrument. Like it's just, so cool. yeah, it does sound great. Amazing. All right. Well, thank you for again for tuning in. Remember that to be entered in this week's giveaway drawing, we're going to be giving you the full details on that. Well, why not right now? Why not right now? All right, hey kids, Glenn, let's do the show right here. All right, yes. <laughs> so Glenn's going to come back over, and David's going to sit back down. So here's the idea for this week's giveaway. You know, we've given away several of these illustrated guitars, and I did this one up earlier with this question mark. And the reason for that is um, this week's giveaway is going to be one of our illustrated three-string cigar box guitars, but you get to pick. You can pick one of our existing designs. You can send us a photo or a graphic. It can be your kid or your dog or whatever, and we'll put it on there. <laughs> you know, awesome. not, don't uh, don't send anything obscene or objectionable, <laughs> please. Um, but we will build a guitar with your image on it and then send it to you a few days That's later. Cool. So that is this week's giveaway. Awesome. And again, to be entered in that, share this video publicly on Facebook, it can be to your own timeline, to a friend's timeline, to a page, to a group, whatever. Uh, just be sure you do select the public option when you share it so that we can see that you have. And we'll be announcing the winner of this, uh, hopefully this coming Wednesday, maybe with a little live broadcast, Hello. like we did this week. Nice. Actually, that was Thursday. Anyway, someday next week, <laughs> something good will be happening. This I swear. <laughs> I appreciate the fact that right now people that that's a this is a key thing that's going on here like when when if we're saying something or if you see something or you hear something that's happening up here that you appreciate that you take the time to press just a simple thumbs up button and just say that you like it it just shows us because we can't hear you yeah. and, it, it, and it's something I'm actually that, doing it from my book <laughs> <laughs> hey, there we go yeah we can't hear you and not every time we can read every single comment so that when we see those thumbs go across the screen it means a lot just to show that you that you're watching that you're appreciating so it, thank it's you the much. new it's the online digital equivalent of clapping yeah really oh, you know if you were here at the show yeah. you might clap right hitting those but oh geez thank you <laughs> <laughs> Those is, is the new... Uh, it's a thumb attack. Yeah, thumb attack. Blinded by the thumbs. And there's always the one angry face. Yes. Like, <laughs> who was angry? Oh, okay, it's fine. It's that, who's that old guy on the left? Get rid of him. Ah. And thank you, Oscar. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Stephen Two Hawks Reed. It was good talking to you the other day. Rick Ganey, amazing stuff, by the way, with his workshop that we're yes. going to share a photo a little bit later on in the week. It's over next week. It's amazing. Well, we shipped a, uh, we shipped a package to Two Hawks. Uh, this past week and he popped on to say how happy he was with how fast it came so the USPS gets a lot of credit for that Stephen yeah. but thank you for your business buying from CB Giddy that's embarrassing that. hey, that's <laughs> sorry when, about when that when you support CB Giddy with your business you support the movement as a whole you know we're sponsoring sure. festivals we're sponsoring musicians and and trying to help uh, fund educational outreach, you know, of making it as inexpensive as possible for teachers and schools to get into this. So the, what you do lets us and helps us do what we try to do. Yep. Very appreciative of that. Thank you. One more quick thing before we get to David part two. Oh. The second half, the uh -huh. third half of today's show. Excellent. Wow. <laughs> I've got a, uh, a general announcement. General, general announcement? <laughs> We yeah. rehearsed that. This is their goal. <laughs> I gotta tell you, folks, this is great. This is better than the Letterman show. I tell you. Another thing we got this week, and again, we're not soliciting gl gifts. Glenn and I, you know, we're 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 not asking anyone to send us anything. We appreciate it deeply when you do. We're not asking that you do. Now, Farley, on the other hand, I bring it on, buddy. What you got? I don't even work here. Send it. Send it. <laughs> this came from Rose Erickson out in Colorado who actually was one of the winners of the giveaway two weeks ago, our, our poster and, and sticker right. bundle set. Well, Rose dropped something in the, uh, in the mail for us, and it is a set of six, five or six, centennial license plates so. from Colorado. Awesome centennial design. And she sends a note. Actually, I, I need to be uh, accurate here. The note was addressed to Nick. <laughs> So, Nick, hey, hope you're watching. Uh, she thanks Nick for his help recently with some support uh, stuff and says, here are some license plates that could make great resonators. They are from Colorado Centennial Bicentennial Celebration in 1976. They only made them for one year. Please hand them out to everyone who would like one. Wow. 
Wow. So, Rose, thank you. Uh, I was like, well, it's been a long time since I've built a, a license plate resonator. Uh, so I went and got, I don't know if you guys know, but we came up with a box kit specifically for making license plate resonators. And uh, they go together pretty easy. It comes cut in parts like this. Now this is very similar to the Giddy Laley kit it that it we is. offer as well. That we're, that David yeah. actually has been doing work with. Um, in, uh, he has built his own. Yeah. And, and painted it. And, I believe. Uh, we, well, a, a nice polyurethane. Because what's really interesting, folks, is that burn from the laser when you put a little poly on it, it actually looks kind of nice. Yeah. It gives it a very nice feel. And when you sand the neck, it's you know, it's one of those happy accidents I like to call. Well, we came up with this tab and slot design. Uh, Jason came up with it yeah. for the Giddy Laley kit, and they were like, hey, you know, this could do other things. So we have different sizes of it now, but it's so great because all you need is a little glue and maybe a couple of heavy yeah. books. You don't yeah. need a bunch of clamps and corner clamps and fancy equipment. It, it kind of sticks together on its own with these tab and slots. So. Yeah. I'm doing my best here to put this one together. We've had more than a few people ask, where can we get boxes that are the right size yeah. for license plates? Yeah. Why don't you have a license plate kit? Well, and, and for the longest time, I mean, it, it's not to, throw, it is. not to throw the ball back in your core, but the, the, the suggestion was what you yeah. can certainly make one yourself uh, until Jason did come up with this design. And blammo, there it is. Blammo. It, it eliminates, the tabs eliminate warping from yeah. the plywood. This one is sized, as you can see, I got this zoomed right. Yeah, good. Cut, in there. Cutting Glenn off a little bit. There we go. Um, yeah, I'm the cameraman today. <laughs> Again, I'm going to be glad when Nick's back. Um, it's sized just for a standard license plate. So you got room to mount it using the holes. You can cut the center out, do a little bracing, attach a neck, and you've got a license plate guitar, which is a pretty cool thing. So, Rose, thank you. We're going to do our best to put these to good use. Uh, Maybe we'll have a little build off or yeah. something. You know. yeah. All right. Yeah, buddy. All right. I put them down on the script. Good. I say script. It's really a loose list of uh, stuff. So, um, just want to talk with you a little bit more, David. Of, of sure. We've talked about the power of introducing kids to this concept, uh, getting them building instruments at, in school age. You know, my son is in third grade. He's eight years old. Uh, we've worked with second grade teachers, you know, they're, whatever that lower limit is, but you get them early, you, you plant that seed of, hey, I can make my own music, I can make my own instrument. Where do, where do you think it's going to go? Where can it be taken? And, you know, uh, well, it, it takes, it takes the, the child student kid to the next level, or even person to the next level. You know, again, as I said earlier, you know, everybody's music. And I think by building an instrument and playing an instrument, it makes you more actively involved. And I think that it's just such a great joy to be able to sit around with people, and, you know, and, and, and you know a couple of chords, you know a couple of songs, and it's just such a great thing. It's great for your mind, it's great for your body, it's great for the world. It's just a great positive thing that, you know, that, that, it's, that it's good. You don't need, you know, deference to, to electronic technology, but you don't need that stuff. And when the power goes out, you, you can't do anything. That's true. You know what I mean? So or if you don't have a Wi-Fi signal, right. you, know, you, you can still, <laughs> and if, yeah, you can it's, still it, do it. It's that common thing. You know, music is a universal language. It's the common thing that, we, that, that really bonds us together. You know, these guys that I, that I played with you know, for over 40 years, I went to high school with them, and that was the connection that we had. Now, yes, you know, people have sports connections. People have car connections. So music is one of those connections. You know that you can put together, and I find that I think to me, for kids, they're missing out on that opportunity. It seems they, like yeah. more and more these days, yeah. like just the idea that a kid can make something with yeah. their own hands, and then yeah. that thing can be used to make something right. in the form of music. You know, it's really is that kind of a double, uh, yeah. double whammy. Yeah. 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 Everything, yeah. Yeah. everything just yeah. seems to be pre-made, and we want to be able to give kids and disposable. Absolutely, you use it, throw it away, get right. something new. Exactly. You know. I polish my own shoes. <laughs> I have a, a fine I shine yeah, there. Yeah, on it, this is, this is the Vans polish, but normally, my, seriously, my father taught me to polish your own shoes because when you did, they were always clean. They were always good. It was respectful. You know what I mean? It's self. It's you're taking care of yourself. Screwing in, you know, a screw for a little kid is hard, but when they learn how to do that, you know, a lot of kids. You know, I also teach high school. A lot of high school kids like don't know how to change a tire. 
you know, they, they call AAA, which is fine. I have no problem because I call AAA. Or call the parents. Or call the parent. <laughs> exactly. In the parent. So, you know, those are the things. That just those things that like a football off the wayside, we're just, you know, we're just trying to bring them back. You know? What suggestion, just, just briefly, because this could be a show unto itself, but yeah. what suggestions would you have for other teachers who might be out there who might watch this and be like, hey, how do I get started? What suggestions? That's a great question. I know that we might have some <laughs> suggestions, like yeah. call Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually, um, this Kanjo book that you gave me and that you guys have, you know, what's really cool about it is it has instructions how to do stuff from scratch. So yeah. even teachers and people who don't know how to do it, you know, there are, there are things in here. Now, the cool thing for a teacher is that you can use the math aspects. Yeah. You can use the science aspects. The math meaning, you know, an instrument like this is called what's called a scale, right? We have the, 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 the top nut and we have the bottom saddle. It has to be a certain... And why are those know, lines where Exactly. They are, they're a know? percentage of that yeah, and they have to be math. there because otherwise you won't have a note. So that's the math part. The science part is when you play this note, you know, how loud is it going to ring? Well, in this case, we have a couple of sound holes, so the sound gets to escape. We also have a pickup, mm. and that helps even more. So all of this extra stuff, and even the history, you know, the fact that, that a lot of times, you know, during the, the, the pre-Civil War period, when the, um, the slaves were brought they didn't have instruments. They weren't allowed to bring allowed, their instruments. Yeah. But they made their own. You know what I mean? So music was the, is that was that important to them? So they made their own. So you know, there's there's a lot of value that you can bring into your classroom. And we are working hard here at CB Giddy in in yeah. coordination with David. He's consulting with us to come up with lesson plans and study guides and as much supplemental material as we can, so that educators out there, it's as easy as possible. And if you are a teacher or an educator or a summer camp uh, per, uh, organizer or a church group or Sunday school or Boy Scout troop leader, if this idea interests you, by the way, it hits a lot of uh, merit badge yeah. <laughs> points yeah. for the Boy Scouts. <laughs> bing, um, bing. If this interests you, uh, get a hold of us. Uh, contact Glenn. We. We yeah. don't have the video wizardry to put his email on the uh, screen. Well, this yeah, for the time being, for for the sake of ease, please feel free to reach out to me, as some people do. So it's 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 the it's the new email, but reach out to me through Facebook Messenger. Through Facebook, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so Facebook Messenger is definitely a, the great place to uh, to get a hold of me. But if 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 you prefer, and I don't blame you if you have the if the, the wherewithal, G W A T T Glenwatt G W A T T at C B Giddy dot com. You got it. That's that's my work email, and I'm happy. I'm constantly working with teachers the best I can in order to, to facilitate instrument building programs in school. Yeah. So it's good stuff. Rusty Taylor jumps in and says, be a maker. Exactly. Right on, Rusty. Build what you play, play what you love. I see Marty Tober out there Marty! as well. Hopefully, we're going to have Marty down here next week. What? Maybe, maybe, maybe. All right. Next Sitting week, in the chair. Excellent. Sitting in, uh, mm -hmm. on juke stage there to talk about some of the work he does with hand-wound pickups and working at, you know, Good stuff to talk to Marty about. Scott Tebow, our brother from Scott up Tebow. north. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Um, well, that brings us towards the end here. I think we're we going to have another. We already had two jams. Is that enough jams? <laughs> Maybe one more jam. What one more gonna, jam. What were we going to do there? Was it uh, swing low, sweet chariot? Right. We're going to push it. All right. <laughs> and I'm going to get out the pizza box Ooh. guitar that. Uh, was born last week. Now, if you watched last week's show, Farley built this while Glenn and I were babbling away. She was out behind us, like, doing work. Um, this is using one of our pre-fretted three-string necks. You get this neck pretty much exactly as you see here, minus the strings and tuners, and you can pretty much screw anything to it to make a guitar. A cigar box, a pizza box, a gas can. We do our best to make it easy. All right. Glenn, you're going to lead us in this? This, I think, is in the key of uh, G. Key of G. Key of the people.
Pizza box guitar and Glenn and Farley's cigar box guitars. A little bit of spiritual yeah. picking and grinning there. Like so, the best day, day ever. Today. Yeah, best buddy. day ever, folks. The best day ever. <laughs> Every day. Best day ever. That you wake up. It's the best day ever. That's right. Ever. All right. Well, that brings us towards the end here. I got a few announcements and tidbits to share. Last Saturday was the first annual Georgia Cigar Box Guitar Festival. From what I hear, it was a great time down there in Atlanta, organized by Rusty Taylor, our good friend, sponsored by CB Giddy, and live broadcast by John Nickel. He managed to live broadcast a lot of the acts, a lot of the performers down there at that festival. And thank you to all of you uh, and Rusty Taylor for making that event possible. Nice job, Rusty. Now, speaking of festivals, we've got another big one coming up in just two weeks. Uh, Saturday, it starts Friday the 22nd of September and goes through Sunday the 24th down in Clarksdale, Mississippi, uh, which has a, you could say, a deep history in the formation of the blues and some of the blues greats. Well, Steve Harvey and Matthew Ritchie have organized a heck of a show down there with what could be, you know, I hesitate to make any grandiose claims, but what could be the biggest, greatest lineup of cigar box guitar musicians ever assembled. I mean, they got headlining, they got Ben Prestige and Super Chicken, they got Johnny Lobo, they got uh, John Nickel was just added yep. to the lineup. There's a whole slew, uh, Steve Harvey and Matthew, uh, Matthew Ritchie and Jimbo. There's going to be such a group of musicians down there, and I just hardly know what to think about it. It's going to be awesome. Hopefully it'll be live broadcast so that event you can get tickets if you're anywhere near Clarksdale Mississippi do your best to get there tickets are available online we've posted about it on the Cigar Box Nation page check it out uh, and then at the end of September another festival the, the Republic of Texas festival organized by Mark Cables down there in Albert Texas at the dance hall it's gonna be another great one another great lineup homemade handmade music Building what they play and playing what they love. I tell you what, it makes me happy. Nice. I can't play this one, it ain't got no strings. <laughs> Eric is on. Hey! <laughs> Thank Any you very other? much, everybody, for tuning in. Yeah. If you yeah, have buddy. the opportunity, if you have the wherewithal, will you please consider sharing this publicly? It would be awesome to see you doing that. And it enters you, as you know, in with this mystery guitar next Ooh. week. Your graphics of choice. Carly, Glenn, Ben, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, very much. Yeah, Have a great day, y'all. Remember to thank the guests. Good stuff. I'm just happy to well, do it. Well, it's Game Show on Starbox Nation TV. It's Giddy Game Show on Starbox Nation TV. And we came to you live from CB Giddy.